What can the living do to benefit the dead? The first three things that are explicitly mentioned. The hadith is in Sahih Muslim, it is authentic. When the son of Adam dies, all of his deeds stop, except for three. Number one, sadaqa jariya. Charity, that is jariya. Jariya means running. Jariya means ongoing. In English, we call it perpetual charity. Any charity, that is more than a one-off. You do it and it remains after you have done it. When you build a masjid, as long as people are coming to the masjid, the sadaqa jariya. You build an orphanage, this is sadaqa jariya. It's something that is lasting after you have initially done it. It's not a one-off. Its benefit continues, especially after you die, you're going to be benefiting after it when you are in the grave. Number two, knowledge that people benefit from. The smallest bit to the largest bit. You are dead and somebody benefited from your knowledge then you will be getting that ajr and your body is in the qabr. So whether you taught somebody how to pray, your children how to pray, and now they are praying and you are in the qabr, every time they pray, you will get their reward because you taught them. Giving da'wah is included in this category. Our Prophet wasallam said, Hadith is a Sahih Muslim, whoever calls people to a guidance, shall get the reward of all who follow him without diminishing either's reward. Neither will get lesser reward just because one followed the other. You have a Muslim colleague at work, not very religious, and you become friends, you invite them out bit by bit. Ya khi, let's pray Jum'ah together. And they become more religious inshallah because of your akhlaq and manners. Every single salah that this person does, Allah will bless you with that reward. And the one who prays will get 100% of his own reward as well. And therefore, when the person dies, the first person, the second person's reward will continue to go back. Another hadith that also proves this, whoever introduces into Islam a precedent that is good, shall be rewarded with all those who follow that precedent until the day of judgment. And whoever introduces an evil shall be given the sin of all those who did that evil until the day of judgment. Category three, a righteous child making dua for him. The reason why piety is mentioned here is because the point is being given the mother the father invested the time the effort the tarbiyah the mother the father helped in this piety that is a lifelong effort now that the parent has deceased and moved on so now that effort will pay off when we are in the qabr we want all of these three things to be giving our investments need to pay off this is the time to invest dear muslim men and women now we can add to this one other thing that is mentioned in one hadith number four and that is ribat fi sabilillahi azza wa jal. the murabit is the one who technically is guarding the borders of the ummah and it's a very difficult a very lonely very boring job but also very dangerous far from civilization far from family and home it's not easy to do and our prophet sallam said that the one who does ribat and dies in that state he shall be safe from the fitna of qabr and his deed will continue to be written for him until judgment day. Even if he dies a natural death at the post guarding the ummah, then that natural death will not stop the thawab coming in and he will continue to be rewarded until judgment day. Point number five, five A and B. Five A, dua, five B, istighfar. وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا Those who come after the Ansar and the Muhajirun, they say, رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ Oh Allah, forgive us and forgive our brethren who have come before us. Meaning the ones who have died. This ayah is explicit dua for the deceased. Allah is telling us, make dua for all the Muslims from before you up until the time of the Sahaba. And as well, we have so many evidences from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Of them is the Prophet ﷺ going to Baqi' making dua for the deceased. Of them is praying for the deceased in the janazah itself. In fact, what is the Salatul Janazah? Except dua for the deceased. The dua doesn't need to be in Arabic. The Quran must be in Arabic. The dua can be in any language. Hadith in Abu Dawood, our Prophet ﷺ said, when you pray for the deceased, pray with sincerity. Pray with ikhlas. Loss. Why? Because you will need it when it's your turn. Hadith also in Abu Dawood. After they buried the person, the Prophet ﷺ said, Now is the time to make dua to Allah to make him firm. Now is the time to ask him for thabat, for afiyah, because now he is being asked by the angels. So we make dua for the deceased at any time and in particular at two occasions. 
Number one, in the janazah, salatul janazah. And number two, right after dafn. Abu Huraira narrated in the Muslim Imam Ahmed, it is mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise the ranks of a rajul salih in Jannah. After his death, obviously, the man will say, Ya Rabb, where is this coming from? What have I done that I'm be getting an upgrade now? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, your child is asking Allah's forgiveness for you. In reality, dua and istighfar are related as we know, because istighfar is a category of dua. Dua for the deceased, you ask anything that is needed by the deceased. Make his qabr vast. Make his qabr, in another hadith, lightened. Make him one of the gardens of paradise. What else can we ask? Good companionship, give him good angels. And in particular, the most important dua is istighfar. And that is what, O oh Allah, forgive his sins. O oh Allah, cleanse him the way that a white cloth is cleansed. In another hadith, O oh Allah, substitute his sins with good deeds. Another hadith that mentions dua and istighfar, Abu Asyad mentions, we were sitting with the Prophet wasallam when one of the Banu Salama tribe arrived. And he said that, O oh Messenger of Allah, is there anything I can do for my parents now that they have died? The Prophet said, Yes. And he mentioned five things. Number one, making dua for them. Number two, istighfar for them. Number three, fulfilling the oaths and covenants that they had after them. If they have a wasiyah, if they have a treaty, if they have anything that they told you to do, now that they're gone, you have to continue doing this. And number four, visiting the relatives that you would not have done except with them. We all have people that are our relatives that we don't have a relationship with them, but our parents did. When the parents move on the relatives are still there to visit those relatives that the parents kept in touch with for the sake of the parents one of my teachers remarked at this why what's gonna happen if you visit some person 50 40 years older than you you have nothing in common there's no conversations you had with them right now you go visit What's the benefit? What will be the only topic of conversation? The deceased. Because that's the one thing in common. Correct? Right? And what will happen when the deceased is mentioned over and over and over again? Istighfar, dua. What's going to happen psychologically? The heart is going to feel comfort and softness as well. The love will be renewed. And then number five, to be generous with their friends. What should a good loving son or daughter do once the parents have moved on or either of the parents have moved on? The Prophet ﷺ gave five things. Number one, you make dua for them. Number two, istighfar. Number three, whatever promise or amana or something, you have to follow that. Number four and five is essentially their circle of friends and relatives. You keep it up.